Hello and welcome to Yadakari Nation. My name is Caroline and today I'll be talking to you all about hermit crab shells. First of all, do not use any painted shells for your hermit crabs. There's a few reasons why. There have been a number of horror stories of different bad things that have happened to hermit crabs in painted shells. The worst one that I've heard of being that hermit crabs can actually get stuck in their shells because the paint is sticky sometimes and traps them in it. It's really terrible and bad for the crab and can kill them. The more common problem with painted shells is that the paint will chip off and the hermit crabs will eat it. Hermit crabs eat anything. I've seen hermit crabs eat dirt and poop and all these things and they will eat the paint. The problem is that hermit crabs are very sensitive to chemicals. As you know, they can't even have chlorine in their water and they will die from the ingestion of the paint. Do not buy painted shells. And if you have a hermit crab in a painted shell, offer it natural shells, and when it changes, take the painted shell away. So why do hermit crabs even need shells? Hermit crabs need shells to protect their soft abdomen. The inside part, or the, ba the back half of a hermit crab is called the abdomen. It's soft and squishy and kind of looks like a maggot. And it's the part that goes inside the shell and wraps around this curl in the shell. Now the abdomen is soft. It does not have an exoskeleton. Hermit crabs take advantage of shells to protect their abdomens from predators. Hermit crabs also need their shells for moisture reasons. So inside that shell, my hermit crab here, Jean, has what's called shell water. It's literally just water that he carries with him inside of his shell. This helps keep his abdomen moist and also helps him keep his gills moist so he can always breathe. One of the reasons you need both salt and fresh water in your hermit crab tank is so that your hermit crabs can regulate the salinity or the saltiness of the shell water inside their shells. The shape of a hermit crab shell can actually affect a hermit crab's body for the rest of its life. Hermit crab abdomens grow depending on the shape of their shell. So for instance, my hermit crab Marceline is a Caribbean crab or a purple pincher crab, same thing. The curl of her abdomen is wider than the curl of the abdomen of my other crabs, like Jean. And you can tell by the type of shells that she chooses. Marceline always chooses shells that have this longer portion so that her abdomen can kind of curl at a less harsh degree. This probably means that when Marceline was a baby out on the beaches somewhere, the shells that she was able to get were similarly shaped to this shell. Her abdomen grew to that curl and she's now most comfortable in shells that have a similar curl. Some hermit crabs can also carve out the inside of their shells to change the inner shape to better suit their abdomen. Specifically, I know this happens a lot with Ecuadorian crabs, and is one of the reasons Ecuadorian crabs don't change shells as often, because they'll customize their shell to their own body. At the end of a hermit crab's abdomen, she has two little prongs or two little hooks that help her hold on on the inside of the shell. You can look up pictures of this on Google. It's really quite interesting. The point being, hermit crabs can hold on very strongly to their shells. That's why when you pick one up, it doesn't fall out, for instance. Or when it's holding on to something, it's able to hold on to its shell. What's important about this is that you not ever try to remove a hermit crab from its shell. A hermit crab would rather get ripped in half than be forced out of its shell. Do not try to pull a hermit crab out. Hermit crabs change shells for a lot of reasons. The most common is probably that the hermit crab got bigger. He came up from a molt and is now larger and wants to be in a larger shell that's more comfortable. The opposite is also true. Before hermit crabs molt, oftentimes they'll move into smaller shells. It's easier for them to bury with a smaller shell and then once they come up they'll look, go and find a larger shell. Hermit crabs also just change shells for fun. So for instance, my crab here, Lolita, just moved into the shell a couple days ago. I added some new shells to the tank, and another crab moved out of this shell, and then Lolita moved into this shell, and then someone else moved into Lolita's old shell. That chain of events where the crabs move into each other's shells is often called a shell cascade. 
How frequently a hermit crab changes shells, shells is often determined by their species. So Caribbean crabs, also known as purple pinchers, are probably the kind of crab you have. They're the easiest ones to come by in the pet store. So for instance, my crab here, Tara, is Caribbean crab, and 10 of my 11 crabs are Caribbean crabs. Caribbean crabs change shells pretty rapidly. As long as you provide them with the right environment, they should be changing shells on a regular basis. Even if they don't stay in new shells, they'll t uh, test drive some and then switch on back. Other species of hermit crabs, like Ecuadorian crabs or blueberry crabs, strawberry crabs, change shells less frequently. I've had Ecuadorian crabs before, and though I've seen them change shells, it's only been a couple of times. Whereas the Caribbean crabs, I can pretty much see someone change shells almost every single day. There are a lot of different kinds of shells to pick for your karma crabs. You've got to know the different kinds so you can pick the best. If you have Caribbean crabs, purple pinchers, then what you're looking for is a shell called a turbo shell. All of these are turbo shells. You see how the shape is very similar? Uh, they have this tight spiral going on. They all spiral to the right in this tight shape. They also all have a round opening. Caribbean hermit crabs, generally speaking, like shells with round openings. So all of these have a perf nice perfect circle as an opening. Even these very big ones over here has a nice big circle circular opening. These would all be shells appropriate for Caribbean crabs, and in fact, except for these very large ones, my hermit crabs have lived in all of these shells. Multiple crabs in all of these shells. Now, this shell, while technically not a turbo, has a very similar shape. You see the round, more or less round opening. It's smooth on the inside. It's got this tight spiral. So these shells are also good. I've had crabs live in shells like this as well. A lot of turbo shells have mother of pearl lining. You can kind of see on the inside here how there's mother, mother of pearl. Almost all hermit crabs, at least that I know of, love mother of pearl lining. It's soft and smooth. You could feel the inside of the shell, how nice and smooth it is. It's very comfortable for their abdomen to have that mother of pearl. Especially if you have uh, purple pinchers, this is the kind of shell you're looking for. Once you know the type of shell you're looking for, you have to know the size you're looking for. What you're going to do is measure the widest part of the mouth of your shell. So this shell's widest part is an inch. This shell, I believe, is two inches. Let me just move that. I believe this is a two inch shell. Yeah, this is about two inches. You're going to want to measure the shell your hermit crab is currently in. So, if your hermit crab is in a shell like this that's an inch wide, you're going to want to buy shells that are an inch, have an inch opening or bigger. Maybe like half an inch or so bigger. It'll depend on the size of your crab. Species other than purple pinchers often like different kinds of shells. Usually they like shells that have a D-shaped opening or an oval opening. This kind of shell is called a Babylon. You'll see Babylon areola, Babylon spirita, depends. They're pretty much called Babylon shells. These are uh, whale eye shell shells. I don't know what these are. But these I've noticed pretty much in PetSmart, and actually some pet codes also, you'll get hermit crabs in these shells. And you'll get Caribbean hermit crabs in these shells, which is really weird because they're not quite the right shape or curl. I've had a number of hermit crabs come to me in these shells, but as soon as they move, they never move back. I continue to provide them anyway just for fun, but nobody has ever really moved into one permanently. Though Jean did try this shell out and then moved out right away. You can also experiment with other shells like this kind. I got these just for fun. They were on sale. And I thought maybe if one of the crabs would like them, they're very lightweight. You measure these kind of shells the same way that you measure the other ones for a size to see uh, for your crab. Generally speaking, Ecuadorian crabs like this kind of shell and this kind of shell with these D and oval openings. And some other species do too. If you have very exotic species, I would recommend doing a lot of research before you get them so that you know exactly what kind of shells to get because some species are very picky. You see my hermit crab Katniss, who is a blueberry hermit crab, so she's an exotic species, likes this shell that has a D-shaped opening. The reason she likes this shell is because her abdomen is flatter and wider than the abdomens of the Caribbean crabs. That's also true for Ecuadorian crabs. 
That's why they tend to like these shells that have these wider openings because they have a wider abdomen. This past Christmas, I actually got a hold of some glass shells. These are really beautiful. You can look them up online. There's a man that hand blows them. Wonderful quality, came really quick. Beautiful, beautiful product. Now, your hermit crab's not gonna move into these shells. We don't exactly know why, but no one's had any luck getting any crabs to willingly move in. There are pictures online of hermit crabs in these shells. I don't know how they got the crabs in the shells but none of my crabs have shown any interest. Well, there's some theories that maybe the glass isn't as porous as a regular shell and so it doesn't allow for the same level of like breathing to go on, but they're really beautiful and I continue to offer them to my crabs on the off chance they'll like them. Even if they don't like them, they're just so pretty. I'm gonna probably put them on a shelf or something, get a couple more. He makes beautiful ones, he also makes ones that are in color. Um, and they're pretty cheap too, I love them. Here are two examples of shells you should not waste your money on. This is the kind of shell that Dante originally came in. Now it's not necessarily this shape of shell that's a problem, but if you look here, you see these ridges on the bottom half of the shell? That's really rough, and they actually continue all the way inside. You can feel them all the way inside. Hermit crab's abdomens are very soft and sensitive. They are not going to want to live in this shell because this is so rough. Look at all the shells you buy and make sure it's nice and smooth on the inside, preferably with mother of pearl, though they don't always need it. Just nothing with ridges like this. They're not going to move into this. This shell has a similar problem. There are some ridges here, though this shell is much better. It's a lot smoother. I've noticed that no land hermit crabs will really willingly pick this shape. I think it's because the actual vessel part here, the part that would hold their abdomen, is so small that the, the size crab for this would just be all disproportionate. They would need much longer legs to be able to move in it, but there's not really the space for the abdomen. And it's a really pretty shell. I bought it for my crabs. Um, be you know, beautiful quality and everything, but they weren't into, uh, into moving into it. They like to play with it though, and it's beautiful to decorate with. There are a lot of places to get hermit crab shells from. If you want to waste your time and money, you buy them at the pet store. Now, if you don't want to waste your time on you buy them somewhere else. I know Petco doesn't sell anything good, and PetSmart rarely has anything useful either. If you want to buy locally and see them in person, then you should go to craft stores, Michaels and AC Moore, those kinds of places. They usually have a shell section for decorative shells, and you can find shells that are good for your hermit crabs there, especially turbos in those larger packages that have like lots of shells. You'll get like four or five nice turbo shells in there, especially if you have smaller hermit crabs. Now, if you want to buy shells specifically for hermit crabs, and maybe for larger crabs, you're going to have to go online. There are a lot of great shell websites. I personally use Naples Seashell Company. Their quality is great, they always ship very quickly. Um, I've never had any trouble with any of their shells, they're really great. Most of the shells I've shown you so far in the video have been from Naples Seashell Company. One of the number one reasons hermit crabs fight each other is for shells. In fact, it's one of the only reasons and it can be very dangerous to have shell fights. Hermit crabs shell fight in nature and they will shell fight in your tank. The best way to avoid a shell fight is to keep a large number of shells at, on hand and cycle them through your tank. So say you have 10 shells, keep five in your tank in two, in two days or so, take out those five and put in the other five and keep the cycle going. If you do this, your hermit crabs will stay interested in their new shells and they won't be eyeing out the shells of someone else. It also gives you a chance to clean the shells. Now, if you do have shell fights going on, usually what happens is the one predator crab will grab the victim from the back and shake him. You might hear chirping during this time. Hermit crabs do chirp at each other. If you separate them and they find each other again in the tank, you're gonna have to isolate at least one of them. I would isolate the victim because that is the crab that's been stressed out and it'll give them some time to de-stress. You know, set them up in an iso tank, food, water, everything and then wait a couple of days and then put them together again and see if it happens again. If it's a continuous problem, I would consult the Hermit Crab Association online. Personally, I've never dealt with any shell fights that lasted past this isolation period. One way to try to discourage the aggressor is to get the exact same kind of shell that the victim is wearing. If you put the exact same kind of shell in the tank, then the aggressor will get interested in that shell and won't be interested in the shell that's on another crab. 
The number of shells you should have in your tank at any given time is a rather widely debated topic. I would say at least two per crab gives them plenty of things to look at. If you can put more than that, that's great. If you have a small number of crabs, like two or three crabs, you could put three shells per or something like that. The idea is just to give them enough to look at and keep them occupied so that they have a nice variety to choose for themselves and so that they don't start fighting over shells. It's a good idea to clean out shells when you first get them and also periodically as you have them in your crab's tank. That's because they'll get dirty and crabs actually poop in their shells too. Sometimes when they move out they leave poop behind and it's good to get them cleaned out. There's two primary ways to clean out shells that I use. One is rinsing them in the sink and the other is boiling them. Now in either of these cases, after you're done cleaning the shells, I suggest you leave them to sit out and dry for at least 24 hours, if not more. The reason behind this is because of chlorine. If you're using tap water, which undoubtedly you are, then your tap water probably contains chlorine. Chlorine is very poisonous to hermit crabs. However, chlorine evaporates and becomes a gas. When the shells dry after you wash them, the chlorine evaporates into the air, so the shells are no longer contaminated. So if you're going to rinse them out in the sink or boil them, either way, you're going to want to let them sit out and dry. One of the cool things about having glass shells is that when you clean a glass shell, you can actually see the water inside of the shell and see how it functions when you turn the shell and things like that. If you wash your glass shells at the same time you wash your other shells, when you look into your glass shells and they look dry, your other shells are probably dry too. If you're going to boil shells, what I would suggest is getting a pot, putting a rag inside the pot and then put in water, and then putting your shells and boiling them for 10 to 15 minutes. Make sure that each shell is full of water. You might want to fill it in the sink and then put it in there so that the water is actually all the way in. Boiling is really the best way to disinfect shells. If you're having a problem with uh, bugs especially, then I would boil your shells. The purpose of putting a rag in the pot is because when a shell presses against the side of a pot, sometimes it'll burn or make a mark. It doesn't hurt the shell at all, it just makes a mark on the shell you can't get rid of. If you're going to boil your shells, please make sure there are no hermit crabs in those shells. Count all of your crabs five times before you boil any shells. You don't want to accidentally boil a hermit crab. So here are a whole bunch of my shells that I've just rinsed out in the sink. I'm going to let them sit for about 15 minutes up like this and then I'm going to turn each of them over and tap them to try to get the water out from the inside. You, if you do this with a shell also oftentimes water comes out or if you just shake it. It's nice to do it over a big towel like this in case water goes flying everywhere. But pretty much these shells will be sitting out here on my counter or at least overnight and then I'm going to put them in my shell bucket and they probably won't be going into the tank again for another two or three days. By that time they'll be thoroughly bone dry there won't be any chemicals left. Be nice and safe for the hermit crabs. Our hermit crabs in captivity are spoiled with their shells. They get a wonderful selection. In nature, hermit crabs aren't so lucky. One of the best things we can do for natural hermit crabs on the beaches of the world is not to take their shells. So, when you go on vacation, or if you, or if you live near a beach, try not to take nice shells from the beach. Also, if you have any old hermit crab shells, ones that are too small for your crabs or maybe are chipped or something like that, bring them to a beach and, put, and leave them there. The natural hermit crabs there will come and take them and love them. Hermit crabs on beaches are much less picky because they don't have as many options, and a shell that your crab might have rejected might be a new home for some other crab. All hermit crab shells were originally snail shells. Snails and conches are the ones that actually grow the shell as part of their body and when they die, it's left behind because it's a bone. All shells you buy online were also snail shells. The only kind of shells that we can create that I know of are 3D printed shells, but I don't believe those are in circulation now. I hope you learned a lot about shells today. My name is Caroline, and thank you for joining us here at Yadokari Nation. Good luck with your hermit crabs.